So now let's move on to our next topic of discussion and that is going to be clustering where we're going to go and talk about what exactly clustering is all about it and what are the key features of VMware vSphere clustering. And that's where we're going to go and deep dive into some of the three core clustering features of your vSphere environment, which is I think 99.99% .99 data centers will have enabled a uh, feature like HA, feature like DRS. So we'll go and try to understand these clustering features and then we'll also talk about uh, one of the core feature is fault tolerance. So these are the, some of the key features of your vSphere clustering. Now let's get started with the clustering, right? Now, before we go and talk about the features, right? Now let's go and try to understand what is the meaning of clustering, right? I mean, first of all, why do I need clustering itself? So let's go and try to understand that. So now let's try to understand first, why do we need a clustering itself, right? So now let's go back to our uh, our, our discussion, what we had it throughout our uh, VMware disc vSphere discussion, right? So we talked about some of the features like Nick teaming, right? So what was the Nick teaming doing for us? So let's say if this is my virtual machines. These are my virtual machines. And let's say this is my uplink right here. So when, if you recall our teaming discussion, in the teaming discussion, we talk about having a single point of failure, right? Because this is my PNIC. And if this PNIC goes down, then my virtual machines will have a network disruption, right? All of my virtual machine traffic, which is going outside uh, outside the virtual switch over this PNIC, but the PNIC itself was down. And that's why we talk about that. How do we make our networking highly redundable, right? How do we make our networking, uh, you know, uh, to handle this kind of single point of failure? And that's where we talk about the feature called NIC teaming. What the NIC teaming was doing, the NIC teaming was giving us two things, load balancing, right? Which we talked about it during our networking discussion. And then we talk about high availability. This is what NIC teaming was giving to us, but at which level? The NIC teaming was doing the things at the PNIC level, right? The link level. This is what we discussed and during the teaming discussion. Then we went to the storage. During the storage discussion, we talk about multipathing, right? What was that multipathing? The multipathing idea was that if this is my storage array, and let's say if this is my initiator, right? And then we do have, let's say somewhere, this HBA is here. This is your switch is here. And there also we have a HBA, which we call controller, right? So this becomes my target. This becomes my initiator. And then we talk about there we have, a, let's say FC switches. These are my FC switches. And this is my HBA, which actually provides storage connectivity. Now, because we are talking from the initiator perspective, which is our ESXi host, we are talking about this HBA, right? So now this is only one path to reach out to the target behind this target. There would be learn, which we have discussed, right? And, we, and then we have discussed that this is not the right design because it's a single point of failure. If this HBA goes down, your ESXi host, which is an initiator, will not be able to get access to the LAN, right? And then it will be having a, a bottleneck for us, a single point of failure. So how do we solve this problem? We solve this problem by adding one more HBA, adding one more FC switches, and introducing more multipaths, basically, to reach out to the same target, right? And that's where we talk about multipathing. And if you recall our multipathing discussion, there also we talk about a different kind of algorithms like fixed path only, most recently used, we talk about round robin policy, but in the end, if you talk about it, multipathing also had a two goal, load balancing and high availability. Right, that was the end goal, what we had discussed during our storage discussion also, right? So you have a multipathing, but at which layer? It's giving us load balancing and the high availability. It's giving this capabilities or this flex. I mean, it's giving us load balancing and high availability at the adapt HBA level, the storage adapter level. Nick teaming was giving us load balancing and high availability at the PNIC level, right? Similarly, if you really understand the entire stack, you will see that we have a high availability, high availability at the VM level also, right? We keep adding more vCPUs to our virtual machine, right? We keep adding more memory to our virtual machine, right? In, in, in a short, it's not a load balancing or high availability thing, but the load balancing, when we when my load is increasing, I have a flexibility. I can keep adding more and more constructs to my virtual machine, right? In terms of handling any kind of these, kind, one of these kind of scenarios, right? Even if your virtual machine is going down, you could have an application level clustering, right? So you, you know that there's a Microsoft clustering. Now, what does Microsoft clustering do for us? If one of the VM is going down, my application should not have any impact, right? 
and that is where we talk about application level clustering right and that is where if you know that microsoft keep having those uh, wsfsc or maybe the microsoft uh, clustering implementation what do we have it so if you really look at right the entire stack of right right away from the application to the entire data center right you will see that every layer you require some kind of fault tolerance mechanism right you also require not only fault tolerance mechanism to avoid the single point of failure, but you also need a mechanism where if load is increasing on the system, you can distribute the load across the nodes, right? This is what the whole idea, right? So now we have handled the failure at the VM level, PNIC level, or the uh, HB adapter level. But now let's come back to the, the, the another kind of failure. Well, let's assume this is my ESXi host, which is my crucial component of my entire data center running multiple virtual machines. Right, it's running the it's running multiple multiple virtual machines, VM one, VM two, VM three, and VM four. And let's say these are my critical VMs. What are running on this ESXi host? Now imagine I've taken care of Nick teaming by adding more uplinks to it. I have added. I have taken care of the storage multipathing by adding more HBA to it. Right, but what if this guy itself fail? If the ESXi host itself fails, then what is the point of having a multiple PNICs or multiple HBAs, right? So now, do we have a mechanism to handle this failure? Because ESXi host is again a server, right? And server can fail. It could have a motherboard failure. It could have a memory failure. Any any kind of maybe it's it, it's power 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 having issues, right? ESXi might go for shutdown. It might go for reboot. It might it might uh, have a hardware kind of issues. It might have a firmware issues, right? Anything goes wrong with this ESXi host. If the ESXi host is going down, then what will happen to these virtual machines? Your virtual machine will have a downtime because if your host itself is not running, your hypervisor itself is not running, then how the VMs will be running, right? So ultimately the idea here is that now we need to talk about the mechanism which can help us to protect any kind of, uh, I mean, it can help us to protect our virtual machine even if the underlying ESXi host is failing, right? Because ultimately, these are the, uh, you know, priority. I mean, VMs are the first class citizen for us in this entire virtual discussion, whatever we are having it, right? Because whatever we have been keep discussing, lies, whatever we have been keep discussing, it's all about your virtual machines. That how do I make my virtual machines up and running all the time, right? And I have to minimize my virtual machine downtime, right? That's the end goal. So now here, what we have to talk about it, we have to talk about that even if my ESXi host is going down even if there is some kind of kind of downtime on my ESXi host. How do I go and maximize the uptime of my virtual machine? Right. To to do that thing, basically, we always require a, a something called clustering. Because without clustering, how would you do that? Right. If you just if you do not have a team of uplink, what is the point of Nick teaming? If you do not have a team of HBA, what is the point of multipathing? Right. If similarly, if you don't have a team of ESXi host, then how would you handle load balancing or high availability kind of stuff, right? So that is where we have a concept of clustering. So what is the idea of clustering? Now, whenever we talk about clustering, which means that now onwards, your VM will not be handled by its dedicated ESXi host, right? What does that mean? It means that now the whole idea of clustering is, this is my ESXi one, this is my ESXi two, and this is my ESXi, so now I'm actually creating team of ESXi host. All right. When I say team of ESXi host, it means that now onwards, you don't care where is which ESXi host your VM is running. That's not your job anymore. See, till now, whatever we are discussing, right? Whenever we create a VM, we always define, I want this VM to be running on ESXi 1 or ESXi 2 or ESXi 3, right? Because you are making a decision that where do I want to keep my virtual machine running? But now, as when, as when you uh, create a team of ESXi host, right? If whenever you create a team of ESXi host, which means that now you cannot define where, in which ESXi host my VM will be running because it's a team of ESXi hosts. So whenever you deploy a VM, you deploy a VM at the new construct level, right? And what is the idea of that new construct? That new construct is basically nothing. That is your cluster. So what happens is basically it is something like you're creating a team of ESXi host. Okay, so now onwards, I am creating a team of ESXi host, right? 
and this team of ESXi host gives me two capabilities. One is load balancing. Second is high availability. Because you know that as when you have a more than one member in your team, it gives you two capabilities like load balancing, high availabilities. What does that mean? It means that if, let's assume, let's assume that there are some of the VMs running on this host. Okay, let's take this example. Now, one of the case, when I talk about high availability, now, when I talk about this high availability, what does that mean? It means that let's assume in a worst case scenario, this fails. If this fails, then we need to have a mechanism where I can take care of these VMs on the other available node of the team, right? And that is where the, the implementation, what we're gonna talk about it, it actually go and restart the VMs on maybe let's say this VM get restarted here, this VM get restarted here, or maybe one of the VM gets started here, right? So what happens is these two VMs, these three VMs will be restarted on the other available node of the cluster, right? Because now it's a cluster, right? The team of ESXi host, team of uplink, we call Nick teaming. Team of HBA, we call it as a, let's say, multipathing, right? Similarly, the team of ESXi host, we call it as a clustering. And the whole idea of clustering is that if one of the node in the cluster is going down, the other two nodes are responsible for, for, for evacuating the VMs and then taking care of these VMs and minimizing the downtime and increasing the uptime of your virtual machine, right? And now it's possible for us to do because now it's not an individual host, right? Now they're working as a team. And if someone is working as a team, it means we get the flexibility of taking care of the failures, right? So if one host goes down, the other two hosts are responsible to take the load of these VMs. Right, and that is where that is what the whole idea of clustering is all about. It think about the load balancing. The load balancing means what happens? Let's say in one of the scenario, one of the host is overloaded, and other host is sitting idle. Right. So again, the same scenario. Let's say three ESXi host, and then we do have a let's say some of the VMs running here. Imagine all these are the VMs, and these guys just have a one on one VM, right? And these are my ESXi host. If they are running as an individual ESXi host, no one cares, right? If they're running as an individual standalone ESXi host, this is also a standalone ESXi host. This is also a standalone ESXi host. And this is also a standalone ESXi host. In that case, nobody cares because you're not working as a team. If you're not working as a team, then how could we take care of your load? Right? How could we go and distribute the load? Right? So in that case, if these VMs are running on this ESXi host, he has to suffer. There is no other option. But as when you configure all these ESXi hosts as a team, then what happens? They work as a team. They work as a one unit. One. They work as a one unit, and in that case, what will happen? The internal subsystem of the VMware clustering will figure it out. Okay, one of the ESXi hosts is heavily overloaded, and these hosts are under underutilized. So why don't, so if these two hosts are underutilized, then let's do one thing. Let's migrate some of the VM on this host and some of the VM on the other node of the cluster so that we can balance out the load, right? And this balancing out is possible only once they're working as a team, right? That is what the whole idea of clustering. And that is the only reason why we need these clustering capabilities because as when we talk about the data centers, right? It is very difficult to manage every individual ESXi host and the VM resource requirement, whatever is running on that specific ESXi host. I mean, try to imagine a world where you, you have a data center of thousands of ESXi hosts, and there are thousands of thousands of virtual machines running on every, I mean, running across these ESXi hosts. If, if there is no concept of clustering, then how our life would be, right? I would be logging to every ESXi host and making, making sure that each of the VM are getting the required amount of resources or not, right? I mean, scanning through thousands of ESXi hosts, making sure that every single VM running on there is their underlying ESXi host should not be having a resource constraint, right? It gets too complicated. If it's a if it's an environment of two ESXi hosts, five ESXi hosts, ten ESXi hosts, that is still manageable. But if you have an one environment of thousand of ESXi hosts, then you can manage. You cannot manage the things 
you know, just by doing this manual stuff, right? That is where we need automation. And the clustering is nothing. Clustering is another kind of automation where it automatically takes care of making sure that your VM resource requirement as a requirements are completely filled up by the underlying uh, ESXi host, right? If one of the VM is having a resource constraint or some of the VMs are having a resource constraint, it have a mechanism in place where it will migrate the VMs on the other available node on the cluster, right? Or if one of the hosts get filled, then it has a mechanism to take care of evacuating the VMs and then, you know, minimizing the VM downtime. So whenever I talk about load balancing, there's a dedicated feature called DRS. So DRS is all about load balancing, load distribution. And then whenever I talk about high availability, we have a feature called vSphere HA. Right? So HA is responsible for high availability. DRS is responsible for load balancing. So if you have interest in learning VMware more in depth, not from an administration perspective, but from the architect or consulting perspective, then join our VMware vSphere Zero to Hero Data Center Expert Program. This particular program has been highly rated by all of our learners. 100 plus careers have been transitioned successfully with our Zero to Hero Data Center Expert Deep Dive Program with the 100% placement record. Now, what are the key highlights of this program? As you could see that it's a India's first job-ready VMware learning program, which has a 70 hours of intense learning with the 80 plus hands-on labs, 40 plus scenarios would be presented to a learner as a challenge questions to assess their learning. We do have a mentors having a 15 years of experience and the certified professionals. You would be getting opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one in person doubt clarification session with the VMware mentor. And this particular zero to hero program will also preparing learners for L3 or senior level profiles. Now we have transitioned many careers with our deep dive program and you can see some of the feedbacks right here on your screen. These are the feedbacks what we have received from all of our successful learners who has transitioned their career with us. So what are you waiting for? If you want to become VMware expert or want to master this technology, then call us now today on the given number or maybe drop us email on the provided email address. Thank you.